welcome you to the regular business meeting for Verona Borough Council for Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Kenna. President Jermicki Bell. Here. Mr. Conti. Here. Dr. Carpenter. Present. Ms. Loalbo. Here. Mr. McCarthy. Here. Ms. Provenza. Here. Mr. Suchovic. Here. Mayor Recupero. Here. Mr. Alexander. Here. Mr. Pitch. Here. I am also here. Council will now hear registered comments from the public. The first up is uh, Laura Jacko and Bridget. Hello. If we need to make it official, I live at 437 North Avenue, but I'm here for the Shade Tree people. I also got an email from Bridget about 10 minutes ago that said that she got really busy with work and couldn't make it, so you're stuck with me. I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, uh, I, I actually wrote a couple of notes just to make sure I hopefully don't forget about anything. But um, I think that most, I think I talked to a lot of you. The reason I'm here is just going over what we're doing for the um, plantings in the fall and then also the spring planning um, as far as the Shade Tree Commission goes and our grants through Tree Vitalize to get free trees. Um, first of all, actually, I want to give you guys a letter to ask if I can be on the Shade Tree Commission because I'm doing all the work for it, but I'm actually not officially on it. So um, if you guys would like to to officially allow me to join, I wrote you a little official letter. Can I give it to you, Sandy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept uh, Laura Jacko to the Shade Tree Commission. Uh, I'll make that. Oh. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, motion by uh, Sandy Drabicki Bell, second by Dom Conti. Are there any questions? Yeah. So how many members are on the Shade Tree Commission right now? One. How many? One. Well, I believe it's Bridget and um, someone is, I can't believe it's going to go on record, but I forget Rhoda's sister's name, but I think she's on it. Thanks. Okay. Sorry if anybody's paying attention. So the, 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 the and, uh, and, and I was going to say, I think you are too. And, and I think and that's it. So there's three members. And do we know what the or how many commission members there are per the ordinance? I don't know. Do you know? I don't, um, but I was given to understand that a couple of people are supposed to be put on it every year, and I don't think anybody's been put on it let recently. Me look, just let me look real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Figure out, what, figure out a way to get it done. Do you mind if I chat so I don't keep you guys forever while you're looking at it? Yes. Yeah, we can kick someone off if you want. No. <laughs> we'll take a vote. <laughs> um, he was the weakest link. No, um, I, I'm teasing. Okay, so um, I... I bugged Jerry and now he hates me a lot um, because we are, it's okay, I love you Jerry. Um, we we got kind of last minute the locations for the trees in the, um, in the parks. Uh, it, it looks like what we're going to do for the fall is do the lower parks. So that is Railroad and Riverbank Park. And then in the spring do um, Cribs Field and also the Oakmont Barbecue slash Off the Rails Barbecue have requested that we do some trees there. So that'll be really nice. Um, I have the final ones. I think I sent it to Jerry and I think he put it in front of some people. Not sure if everybody. Um, Janet was actually thankfully there when they were doing the site visit for this. Um, so thank you. That was super last minute, and I really appreciate it. Um, do you have anything you'd like to say about it? I mean, I'm assuming you're okay with all the places that they said for trees. I thought they you were, were there. fine. I okay. just know, you know some of the trees were dying, and it had maybe to do with some of the herbicide that was sprayed. So some of them may be replaced. But that's on my list to discuss. Okay, but no, oh yeah. that's, that's all I'm yes, yeah. So I have it printed out. If you guys want to keep it for your records of where we're putting public trees, we're also doing some um, street trees on north where I live um, and other addresses around north and on Center Avenue and Bruno. Um, so fall. I'm sorry? The north and center in the fall also? Yeah, this is the fall. In the spring, I have some more locations in north that are going to go in as well as um, the Oakmont Barbecue Company, which is on the main drag, mm -hmm. and then Cribs Field. Do you have um, enough copies of those where, where you're going to put them? This like is half fall. Yeah, here you go. Thank you. Can you send us an email maybe with that on it? I have it in an email. Yes, I'll send saying. it to you. Okay. Oh, yes, Jerry has the email. So, so the, the ordinance yeah. says that the, the commission shall be composed of three residents of the borough 
who shall be appointed by borough council and serve without compensation. So right now we have three three members on the board. I can ask if anybody wants to go off. Yeah, or we can change it. Doing all the work. Yeah, I mean, uh, not all. Bridget, a lot. like Bridget and I are really working together a lot for sure. I tease like about doing everything, but um, so I can I can ask Bridget if there's anybody who might want to step down. Do we do we know when the terms expire? If anybody's term might be expired. No, unless it says when was that ordinance done. Twenty sixteen. So probably not. It's been three years. Let me see how long the terms are. Council is hereby directed to appoint two members of the commission for a term of three years and one member of the commission for a term of two years. So that term's expired. So do we know who's which term? Don, do you know who has, who has the two-year term? No idea, to be honest. Okay. So we can email about it if you want. Well, I, I, I think so that the council's in favor, but I think that we should appoint her. Um, it would be a, a three-year term at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Waiting for the resignation of the second year, the two-year member. To fill the vacancy. Yeah, there's no resignation. There wouldn't be no resignation. They, they, they continue to sit until the vacancy is filled. On, on the uh, Shade Tree Commission. Okay. So by appointing Laura tonight. That takes that person that takes off that and puts her on. Yeah, but we just don't know who that person might be. It's a two year term. We'll go back and look in the minutes. Okay. What, what if it's Bridget? I was just going to say that'll be a problem because she's the president and she's the only one who. We should see who it is. Uh, she, Maybe, might, she might know who it was. I can ask we, her too. Should we? Rescind the motion for now. Yeah, and do yeah that's why I said we workshop. can. Yeah, we can do email. I can come next time. You've got my letter. It's official and everything. But we have a so. vacant seat. We do. We Theoretically. Do. She doesn't want to displace Bridget if it's Bridget. Right. Because Bridget is the president. So, um, yeah. So we'll just email around a bit. Who should I be in touch with? You, Jerry, Me. Nancy, you? Me. Okay. Then we'll figure, out, we'll figure out a way to make it happen. Okay, it's yeah. Okay. Have people in there working hard. I'm sure. Okay, so yeah. um, I'll rescind the motion. Is there a second? second. Okay, cool. Um, so, yes. Which is leading me to my next point then, um, the pesticide use in Riverbank Park. Um, so apparently, and Janet can probably speak to this more because she was there, I wasn't. Um, when the tree vitalized people were here doing their site visit, they noticed that, um, I, I have my the email here from the gentleman, um, that there was some um, significant herbicide damage to the trees planted between the park and the river. Um, at least one, um, I believe, oak tree was killed and three others have foliar damage that are all directly due to the herbicide spray. And I was talking to the gentleman on the phone as well and he noted that the way that the spray was, it looks like it probably was hitting playground equipment as well, um, which is uh, obviously problematic because we don't want young children being exposed to pesticides. I was also informed that, the, and I don't, this is all secondhand to me, but there's a possibility that it's illegal to spray pesticides that close to the river anyways because of the runoff in the river um, and there might be permits that are required required with some pesticides as well that being sprayed so um, we need to make sure that that whoever is doing pesticides down there is doing it properly and that they're doing it in a way that doesn't affect the trees and that they're spraying the correct things and or that they might not be allowed to spray it all that close to the river. I'm not aware of the road department doing that, but I will look into it. Okay. As far as I knew, they weren't they okay. weren't supposed to spray anything about it, but I'll find okay. out. I'll find yeah, out if they it, did or if they know who did. Yeah, and I like and if aside from the tree issue, like it it would be getting on playground equipment too, yeah. so that would be like Putting aside my tree hat, it's a child, a mother of a two-year-old hat. Ah, that's horrible. Um, Is that so. a confirmation that I mean, like? Was was that confirmed that it was? Well, they said that um, looking at how far it got and where the drift was and where it was, that it was very likely that it was hitting the playground equipment so as well. By appearance, that they're assuming that there was a yeah, yeah. But looking at where uh, the trees were that were affected. So I'm you looking can, at. I'm sorry to interrupt you uh, again. But yeah. I'm looking at Ecos 360, and uh, in the my my thing on my system said 1960. Uh, 2016 it actually said ordinance blank of 2013 and eco 360 says it was adopted on july 23rd of 2013 
So all of those terms are expired. So we may want to, you know, re reappoint people at next month's meeting or at the workshop meeting. Okay. If you don't mind me waiting a month. I don't care. That's fine. I mean, I'm doing the stuff anyways. Like, I, I, I just care. I know this is going to sound really hokey, and maybe people believe me they won't, or maybe they won't, but I just want to make the world a better place. So I'm going to keep on planting trees, no matter if it's, like, official or not. You know, I'll just I'll just do my best to make Verona and the world a better place. So I'll, I'll keep on keeping on whether, you know, whether I'm on it or not. That's cool. Can we bump that up to five, Craig? I'm sure we can. So, I mean, we would, the board would have to ask you the have, three. You would have to pass a new ordinance. We're right. doing a new ordinance. Let me, uh, while we're sitting here talking about it, I'll look on the borough code to make sure that you can have a five-member shade tree commission. Because, I mean, the, the three of them, the board would have to ask, hey, do you want to, um, you know, in a, my opinion, do you want to still be on it? There's someone else, you know, would like to be on it. And to me, the more, the, the better. Yeah, I'm cool with that. And I know you have to have five because... Do we have enough people that would want to do it? Well, so you would need one some more. Of these boards well, yeah, but the, these people, she, if, like she said, there's only two of them doing the work. So... Oh, <laughs> I was, I was uh, teasing. I was saying I was doing the work on these plantings. I might as well be on it. That's all. But I think, like, Bridget and me have been the ones who've been organizing, like, a lot of the tree plantings recently. So um, I think, like, the two of us being on it definitely be good. But the other people who want to still be involved, I think they should still be involved if they want to still be involved. So, yeah, the more the merrier. I don't know about five. It would be four. So, yeah, you'd have to have an odd number. You'd have to have an odd number, yeah. Yeah. So it's up, it's up to you guys. So, um, but yeah, when's the workshop? The twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. It's always the last Tuesday of the month. Okay. Do you need me to come to that, or do you want me to help with about that? Because she is the president, so she probably has the say. We have her letter, right? Yeah, we have the letter. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Um. But yes, if anybody would have a say, it would probably be Bridget, because she's the current um, president of the Shade Tree Commission. Um, so yes, if um, Dom, would it be all right if I just check back with you on the pesticide use? And I think Janet, probably, because you're on the rec board as well, will yes, keep up right. on that just to make sure that they're not yes. spraying anything down there. Um, because, yeah, and like the, the other thing too is it does compromise our ability to get future trees because if we're not good stewards of the trees that we get, they do take that into account when. This was supposed to be sprayed ones. between the fence and the river? On yeah, the they said that it was. Actually, Janet, you were there, so you yeah, could probably describe like it better. Been, they sprayed like along the river and on the bank and it probably drifted up okay. either by the wind or whatever. Okay. Who would have did that? I don't know. It, that happened. They said the trees appear to have had pesticide you know, damage. Pesticide damage. Or so herbicide how damage. How many trees are we anticipating the fall herbicide planting? Or pest. The fall planting is like 21. 21. 21 trees? Mm -hmm. And how many in the spring? I don't know yet. I am finishing up the application for this week. And I think the application for this spring, they're going to need to do another site visit and check out Cribs Field. So that's kind of TBD. So the fall planting will be the lower parks. And then some street trees. North Avenue, Brunot. Uh, yeah, Brunot and Center a little bit. And it, there and may center. be, yeah, and there's a couple of trees in there that are replacements for trees that have been planted before but that have since died. Like, ARB. Um, yeah, I think there's some on ARB. I did notice that there's one down by the get-go, and they might throw that in there as well, try to get that in last minute. If not this time, then next time. Okay. Like, they do keep up on the trees that were planted before and making sure that they're, you know, those are the are still. Uh, Railroad Park along the tracks. Did you check with the railroad? Um, I don't. The they're not along. I think they're along the other way. Am mm -hmm. I? Did, did, I see four of them near the near the tracks, not on the tracks, but near them. We tried putting pine trees in there, and the, the guy from the railroad gave us a hard time about it. Like maybe just check. I'd rather see the trees along the tracks than have to see the tracks. But yeah. just make sure he's not going to give you a hard time about it. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I, I can check to make sure that that's okay, that that was a concern that was brought up, and we'll just make sure that that's... Yeah, it looks like they're replacing... Oh, they're repla the ones along the tracks, they're replacing two trees that are already there. So it's they're replacing two dead pitch pines along the railroad tracks and adding two more in the space at the southernmost end. So it looks like some of that's replacement for existing dead trees, so it should be okay. But do you want me to still check? 
Yeah, it's up to you. I, I don't want I don't want you putting the trees in and then that guy saying you got to take them out. That okay. Would be, yeah. Yeah, I, I can just make sure that that they yeah that anything that's like right on the railroad is just replacing what was already there. Laura, mm -hmm. in regard to the herbicide thing, and I don't know that you know the answer to this, mm -hmm. but um, I would think that if a big oak tree is dead from from I, I think it's a weeping oak. Well, regardless, yeah. I mean, those kinds of things don't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if they, the people who are the experts can guesstimate, maybe it was some kind of spraying thing that happened five years ago that eventually killed it. Because a big tree like that isn't going to just yeah. die in, a, in six months. I think, and you can verify for me, it would have been one of the trees that had been previously planted. So I don't think it was a big tree. Is that right? Right, right correct. Oh, it was a smaller tree. Right. It was a smaller tree that would have been done okay. in the previous planting, which is like the issue is because they're checking back on the ones that mm -hmm. they had paid to plant. Mm -hmm. So if we're doing something to kill off the trees that they paid for us to get, then yeah. they're like, oh, that's what are you guys good. doing with the trees? You know. Okay. So um, that's why we. That's why it was brought up. I mean, they were very nice, and they were just like, you know, hey, check into that. Shouldn't be happening. And it looked like it wasn't just the one tree. It was that there was significant damage to surrounding trees as well. So there was like something. All that the trees they, that were planted previously by them. I don't know about all of them, but it was other ones. So it said significant herbicide damage. Whoever is spraying the riverbank is inadvertently killing the trees in the park because the spray drifts onto the trees. If we're to plant in the park, there must be significant changes to how herbicide is handled. Please have a conversation with the borough to manage their riverbank in a way that does not negatively affect the trees planted in the park. The oak tree that died and the three that have foliar damage are all directly due to herbicide spray. So I, I just read that one, that right. verbatim. Yeah. So are the weeds dead? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I just wondering after all that. I know, right? I hope so. I hope they at least got what they wanted to get done done. <laughs> so I would imagine that there might be a more optimal way. Or you, you were saying that you didn't even think they were supposed to be spraying down there. So no, that, I mean, so I mean, there shouldn't even be anything going on down there. Um, we keep in contact with each other. If he's down there and sees weeds are high, he lets me know and they go down and take the weed oh, whacker or brush cutter. And yeah, that should be appropriate. Yeah. Yes. I've never known them to go down and spray that hillside, especially right on the river. Yeah, yeah, I might maybe check with them. Maybe if it was some new guy who didn't know, you know, things happen. It's okay. Yeah. They're, they're cool. Um, it's just something that should be brought up. Um, oh, and just uh, I wanted to ask everybody because I want to get everybody input when I can. I know it was kind of last minute getting this last thing done. So um, if anybody has an input on the fall planting date, I would be happy to take that to them. It looks like like um, the last weekend in October and running through Thanksgiving is when they usually do it on Saturdays. So if there is any conflicts, please let me know. Or if anybody has a preference, if they want to kind of show up and help plant some trees, um, you know, let me know. But I'd be happy to take any any uh, thoughts if anybody has has suggestions for for the date. Or if so there's it's any the last week of October through Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So on like Saturday. basically Saturdays, last week in October or November Saturdays, and we plant then because the trees are kind of going into their dormant phase. So it's a good time for them to sort of get acclimated to where they're going to be, and then in the spring they they're generally pretty happy and ready to leaf out then. Do they anticipate getting all 21 trees planted mm -hmm. in one day? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, tree vitalize comes through. Apparently, so I've never done it before, but I've been told that tree vitalize comes through. They actually dig the holes and they bring the trees. So they do. They they um, have at least um, supplement, and they also advertise. So, but through the Verona Community Group, we're going to be advertising for volunteers as well to help get these done. This last Saturday in October, I know that the Halloween parade is that day, and there's like. So not the last Saturday in October. Yeah. Yeah. And the 16th is the Christmas uh, light up parade, so it's probably. 16th of November? Yes. Okay. So that, the that's not a Saturday, so. Oh, it's not a Saturday? Okay. 16th is a. Oh, November? November is Saturday. Saturday. Oh, yeah. I think so, unless I, I can't see. the wrong calendar. <laughs> Okay, so not 16th, not last weekend in October. That sounds right. like. And so then the other ones are more ideal. The ninth, looks like. Okay, yeah, well, I'll ask for those ones. Um, so that's pretty much where we are. I hope that that is more or less good news for everybody. And I think that we'll have some 
beautiful new foliage for next year and I'm really excited for the spring one too to get more foliage on Allegheny River Boulevard as well. The new uh, barbecue place is really, the people there are really cool so I'm looking forward to working with them Good. and inviting them as part of the community. So any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'd say you know, a big commission uh, member mm -hmm. should be uh, certified as a uh, tree tender. Oh, tree yes. Tender. Yes, I need to go take that class. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay thank you. Thanks. Okay, so, thanks. Just so the mayor and council are aware, um, what the composition of the Shade Tree Commission states in the borough code, and I, I just love the way our, our legislatures write laws. It says uh, in the general provision, except as provided in subsection B, a Shade Tree Commission shall be composed of three residents of the borough. And it goes to subsection B, council option. The council, by ordinance, may provide that the trade tree commission be composed of five members. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's a five-member board, uh, it says you have to do it a five-year term, a four-year term, a three-year term, a two-year term, and a one-year term, so that every year oh, somebody boy. comes off. And every and then, then after that, it's a five-year term. As you replace them. Yeah. yeah. So I, if, if council would like me to do that, I can amend the ordinance. We can have it ready for uh, passage at next month's meeting. I think we can, you know, we can take it to the committee, but we'll still have it ready for next month's meeting. Okay. Yeah. Committee. So and we'll advertise idea. it too. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. We'll be able good. To get five people. Sounds good. Yeah. What happens if we don't five? If there's not five volunteers, then there'll be. And they all need vacancy. to be tree tenders. Okay. So. Well, that, the the the, or, the 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 board the code doesn't say they have to be tree tenders. Okay. Do you need a motion for that, Greg? Sure. Okay, can I have a motion for uh, Mr. Alexander to amend, and, amend advertise. The, amend and advertise the Shade Tree Commission Ordinance? I'll make, I'll a, make motion. a motion. Motion by Mr. Uh, Sachevich, second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Okay. Council will now hear from Flora Albert. Hi. Hi. I'm Flora Alberts. This is Colin Carver and this is Tammy Belovic. We you need your address, please. Mm -hmm. 476 Poplar Street. I'm in Verona. Colleen's 871 Second Street. And Tammy is 207 Golden Gate. We represent the Verona Moose and the Verona Eagles Lodges. We are organizing a Verona Community Blood Drive. It's sponsored by both lodges. It'll be hosted at the Verona Moose. This will be October 20th from 10 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, what we need here, what we'd like, is uh, your resources. Um, who you contact to get the word out there. Can I have yeah, we have posters. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if it's possible or, or what the details are using that uh, revolving billboard over the bylaw. The, the di digital. The digital. Well, digital. yeah. Fine. Yes. Thank you. Uh, or, or any of the other ways of um, communication you have, of advertisement, the newsletter, whatever you have. The, because this is built as a Verona community. I need to do the boards to the Cribs Field down right. here. Right. Mm -hmm. I think. They can also reach out to all the churches in the community and they'll help us right now. Well, yeah. we're going to go stomping around Friday and um, get the posters out, go up and down the boulevard, get go the churches, the library. Um, we already hit Oakmont Water. Um, but like I said, we need your resources to, to do this. Thank you very much. I'll put it on Facebook. I'll put it on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And like I said, this will be held at the Verona Moose on October 20th, Sunday from 10 to 3. And they recommend that you make appointments uh, to, to give blood. There's information on this. You can go to vitalent.org. Um, you have a group code. And all you need to do then is enter that group code and you will be immediately directed to a schedule. So say you want to come at 9 o'clock in the morning. You, you know, sign up for 9 o'clock or you want to come at 11 o'clock, you can sign up for 11 o'clock. By talent basically does all of the scheduling. We don't have to do anything like that. They handle everything. They bring all the equipment in, um, everything like that, all the employees, all the staffing that would be necessary for the blood drive. Um, basically, all we need to do is fill the slots. 
Well, this, but you don't need a, uh, an appointment. Well, they recommend it. Right, but I'm saying if somebody way, comes in. No, no, they wouldn't okay. turn anyone away. But if you have an appointment, at least that, they, they know how many people they have to right. staff. Right. They can also do a certain number of people every, say, hour. They, they block it so that you have a certain amount of people. So you don't want 50 people coming in the door at 10 o'clock in the morning going, I want to donate blood because then <coughs> some of those people are going to be sitting there for hours. Right. Waiting. So if you, if you schedule everything, then you don't overwhelm the staff. People don't get kind of fed up and leave because that's not what you want. You want everybody to kind of you could run everything in an orderly fashion. Um, Just go get a beer then. Wait for the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. after, 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 after. 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 So sign up. Sign up early so that you can go get your beer. <laughs> and they have changed some of the requirements. Uh, for uh, for living blood, I know someone said oh, I had mono as a kid. I can't give whatever. A lot of that's changed. So if you think maybe you can't, maybe you can. So if you look into that website, they'll give you all the answers. So and a lot of people say I'm afraid of needles. You'll be okay. Look the other way. This you know. <laughs> I mean, this is important. <laughs> Will the blood drive be at both the moose and no, the moose? No, only at the moose. Only at it's, the moose. It's sponsored by both clubs, but it's being hosted only at the moose. Do you get a free beer when you're done? I'll buy you a beer if you look the other way from the needle, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee, regardless of the beer, I'm looking the other way at the needle. <laughs> So that's a Sunday, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. yes. We kind of like to think of this as we all have friends, family, or neighbors that are are battling, say, certain diseases, whether it's cancer, whether it's other um, afflictions, and or just surgery. Pennsylvania, right now, they're saying, especially Allegheny County, as a, their blood safe supply is at an all-time low, actually. So it's really kind of important. You never know, you know, God forbid something happens, you know, you're driving down the street and. and it doesn't matter what blood type you want at all. No, no, no. no. Everybody is, everybody is. And this is a bye week in the Steelers. So, you know, yeah, yeah, you'll be okay. After last Sunday, who cares, huh? Yeah. You'll be okay. Right, you'll be okay. okay. Laura, do you want a little blurb in the newsletter? Yes, please. Be great. Yeah, well, whatever resources you have. Uh, give me a call then. Okay. Or are you going to be here? The whole meeting? No. When when is the newsletter coming out? First week in October. I'll, I'll get okay. something from where I'll get it to you. Oh, okay. I'll get your phone number, what, from Dom? Yeah. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome, Sylvia. That'd be great. Okay. Uh, the, the more word that's out there, the better it is. Right. I mean, it's just a good thing. Well, that goes in every home, so. That's the right. Sylvia, could you take one of these and put it in the, in the newsletter? Just attach that right to the, there's your article right there. We could, or maybe oh, what, Whatever you want. Yeah, I, yeah, I can call you. We also plan on kind of starting at one in a town and working our way through and, and, and contacting the local businesses and things like that and having that first stuff. So hopefully we can kind of truly make it up. What? The Jerry's the also going to look news. into the Steel City. We're going to start. We're going to start at one in like the Trinity Lutheran. Jerry's just going to look into the Steel City. Just go down, get go down, down here. The lower oh, board right. down here. Uh, um, the churches, uh, library, Jeannie, uh, you know, what, yeah. anything. Okay. And I already got a few out, but we want more out there. Okay. I'll put one All right. in my office. You're awesome. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. Can we leave you a few? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Leave thank you. Thank you. I'll put thank them on my desk. My front desk. Leave okay. me a little stack. I'll put them All on right. my front desk. Thanks. We could put a few in that twirly thing in the in the lobby there too. Mm -hmm. That has other announcements in it. Laura? What? The technical Hello? term? Twirly? There's a thing in the. <laughs> There's a rack at the rack, lobby. Yeah, in the, right out here in, okay. the, in the foyer there. Okay. That you could put some of those flyers okay. and All right, hang perfect. one up on the bulletin board. Right, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thanks, girls. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jessica? No, I want you to come with your baby. Okay. Um, hi, Jessica Varone, 722 Bruno. I'm here to share updates on Community Day, which is happening this Saturday, right out here in the park from 3 to 7. I'm pretty excited about it, and I want everybody to keep their fingers crossed for good weather. I think it should be okay, maybe raining in the morning, but um, we're not going to cancel it unless it's like, you know, all terrible, you know, lightning, thunder, downpour kind of a situation. So, I um, really want to thank all the community members that have helped me plan it. This has been um, about m many months in the making. Um, and 
and um, we've been working hard on trying to get the word out. The event has been advertised um, using email, posters. Um, I ran a Facebook ad for uh, about a month um, on Nextdoor. We did the Grapevine email newsletter list. Um, then the electronic billboard, I think it's up there. I haven't seen it myself. It is, but, I confirmed mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Glad somebody saw it. Um, and then uh, thank you, Carrie, for getting that in the trip. Um, we hopefully you've all gotten my emails about it or have seen like the list of activities that are going on. Um, I won't run through them all, but just some of the key highlights we're having the um, the Western Pennsylvania Center for the Arts has their junior orchestra that's going to play. I think that'll be really, really sweet um, right at three o'clock to kick things off. Um, we've got the designer purse bingo. We're working with the Riverview Educational Foundation. So that's been a really nice collaboration. And Carrie, again, thanks for hooking us up with that way back in early planning. Um, the pet parade, that should be fun. Um, live music from Jenkins Crumb. Thank you, Mike, for helping make that happen and for, for donating to, to help support that. Um, so a lot of really fun activities, touch a truck. Um, I can you know share the list with everyone. Um, so just want to touch base on a few things um, uh, from council. I know we've asked, and I've been working with the mayor on, on these um, questions too, uh, and Nancy and Sylvia have all been involved in planning. So we've asked for the road to be closed um, right out here starting at, I think we decided one? Um, 1.30, I believe. 1.30? Yeah. Um, I couldn't remember what we decided. 1.30, um, and we want to keep access to the parking lot at the end there, and then um, I, I do think we need to close it up to James Street, though, because people could be coming out of the I other side of the park. The south. I, I thought it was the south right here. Yeah. So would it be a problem to close it to James? So we're going to get a heck of a traffic mm -hmm. backlog with anybody going down that alley. Everybody has to make yeah. a left. I'm just trying to, I'm just thinking about the people that are going to be on the other side of the park walking around, and I don't want that to be a problem. Did you, does, I mean, does council feel like that would be a problem? But then you block off that whole parking lot. If do you? you? James. Yes. Yeah. And how do people access Allegheny River Boulevard down toward Well, they go through the alley. That's the way we do it for the car crews. But I was under the impression just from south to the edge of the borough okay. building. Okay. Um, we'll put the signs up for pedestrian crossing like yeah. we do for the... Um, Farmers market. Farmers market. Okay, because the food trucks and everything are going to be on the opposite side of the pavilion. So I just didn't want, you know, people going out in the street. Um, but hopefully it'll be okay. I, I think it'll be okay. okay. <laughs> did you talk to the road department about closing the road? Yeah, I did. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then that'll open up again right after it's over, you know, whenever we're going to be cleaning up right afterwards. So. Um, and then I talked to um, Kevin Ewing about this, and I, I think he, maybe Nancy, you also talked to him, and he's been in touch with somebody here to get the chamber tent set up on Friday. So that's, is that a go? Everything? What he told me um, on Thursday or Friday, Thursday I think, was that he was going to get in touch with AJ mm -hmm. and tell his brother Kirk, who is like the expert at putting that tent mm -hmm. up, and they just need to have verification of exactly where we want to have it. So we, so, should, we should decide that and mark it somehow for them. How do you want, so I have a map. Um, I just don't know who to send that information to, I guess, to make sure it gets to the right person. Um, Let's talk after, okay. figure it out. Anybody that wants, I have like four copies of the, the setup. If anybody wants this, I'm happy to share. I'll take one. Um, which I, you, I emailed it to you, so you should have electronic, I know, but, but I can I give you a printout. Way to print it out. That's fine. Um, so, and then we'll be using tables and chairs from the chamber, and I think they're working on where we can pick that up. Um, one question, can we get trash and recycling bins set up in the park? Um, for people just to make sure we don't have extra litter being left out. We have those blue cans. The blue right? barrels. You put those yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Um, and those are all like the, the logistics. Um, and, uh, you know, I really want to thank you again for your $500 contribution. Um, and I'll send a report after this, uh, after the event is over. We are using 295 for the balloon sculpture, 115 for the reusable banner that we put outside the dentist, which we can reuse every year. So that's really nice. Um, about $63 for posters and uh, 20, 25 bucks for a Facebook ad, which I highly recommend doing if you're ever trying to promote an event. Because, you know, for 20, $26, it reached over 3,000 people so far and it got 100 people to respond to the event. So I think it was really worth it. 
Um, so that's the, the most of the updates from the community day. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know because um, we're going to be kicking off a Trex recycling program that day. Rhea um, Homa is leading that effort. She's out of town right now, so I just wanted to share with you an update on that as well. It's a six month project starting Saturday and it will be ending March 14th, um, 2020. Plastic bags? Yeah, yeah okay. and other items. So we need to collect 500 pounds of plastic waste and then Trex is going to donate a bench made of the recycled plastic. So that like plastic decking kind of material, um, which is really exciting and I, I, I think we can get there. Um, and then we'll work with the Parks and Rec Department um, uh, board to figure out where that bench would go. But um, um, they're going to be collection boxes right here inside the building in the borough building and then another one at the Giant Eagle here in Verona and uh, I know Rhea is hoping to add locations in at Verner she's working she's been emailing talking to the PTO about it I know they had a meeting I'm not sure what the result of that was I think it would be really fun to get the kids involved um, and then I think at the firehouse was she talking to you about that Ray I got an email something about it and I, I, I don't personally think we have a problem with that the problem would be there there's no public real access to it yeah you know I mean they want to put one on a ramp somewhere or something but but outside, then it's yeah. wet. You no, know, inside it's it's a locked building. Right. It's not a public building yeah. per se. So yeah. I don't uh, know if she had something in mind or what, but I'll I mean, mention. I, I mean, she can put one in there, but I don't think it's going to do that well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Churches. Yeah, she didn't say that when I talked to her today, but I think a church. Yeah, a church would be a good idea. Um, I want to ask her about that. Um, and then we'll just communicate, you know, as we add locations and all the various ways that we do. So um, the, there's a lot of materials that fall under this category. It's like grocery bags, bread bags, bubble wrap, dry cleaning bags, newspaper sleeves. Um, you know, you get a, a case of like soda, the wrapping around there, um, any, you know, pallet wrap, uh, produce wrap, cereal bags. So all of that stuff can actually be recycled. Um, so toilet paper and paper towels. The wrapping around those yes yep all that stuff so um and it's stuff that i don't even think about recycling right now so um save it all because we need to get to our 500 pounds <laughs> um and we'll be promoting that in um various ways so to try to educate people about what they can and can't recycle but and she'll have bins out there at community day uh too to help spread the word so do you guys have any questions about community day or in regard to the donations did i know council did 500 mm -hmm. did anybody else donate the I was going to bring it up. Yeah. There was a, some mix up. Kevin called me today. You will be getting a check. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> yep, so Chamber uh, con contributed to. He thought it was out, and I, I don't know what happened. How much? Yeah. 250 250 Yep. Yep. And then um, and Mike also is going to be donating some funds to help pay for the band, too. Um, and we'll hope to. Um, but hopefully expenses will be less next year and we can use other mechanisms to raise funds next year as well. So, any other questions? You should send letters out to the businesses and stuff asking for donations, little donations. Right, I think when like we first- Like to the fire hall and stuff, if we would've got a letter uh -huh. or something, you know, there's a possibility from there. I never would have thought to ask the fire hall because part of the community you, because i would think that you guys would also be getting do, wanting donations <laughs> well <laughs> so i wouldn't want to take from yours yeah well you know how that but, goes you, yeah we're there to help everybody yeah. Yeah. thank you yeah i wouldn't have thought that so thanks for bringing it up um you had a question yeah is this also will this is tonnage will this also add to our tonnage uh will we record this no no this is totally separate from our waste and recycling program yeah. it but counts yes we, we discussed that already the grant. yeah that's what we talked about last week. 904 grant oh yep we discussed okay. that i don't know i wasn't part of that discussion so because i think raya has to like weigh it herself so it's not like it's being weighed by a um <coughs> by tracks or anything yeah. she needs to keep it calculated but she'll be yeah keep it track it. Mm -hmm. that'll go towards the borough's tonnage yeah. yes but if there's something else she needs to do that's specific for this grant requirement that might be helpful for her to know because she only knows the requirements for that Trex has i'll just so, need it. i just need to know the number i need okay. when i fill out the grant which we're working on now i just uh -huh. need to know what last year's number was and then if it's one of those things that you report it and if they audit it, you have to be able to say, well, here's how we calculated it, mm -hmm. but we just need the number. So you won't want that until 
Well, it's when? not until September, but no, next but, year at this time then. The, the county one's earlier, so that's what March. March. So we need it okay. by March. Well, then that's good timing because this ends in March. So perfect. Yeah. So when it's done, we'll just get okay. a copy of it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. And here's here's your map. Anybody else have any things? Yeah. Can I have one, please? <coughs> you email me. Him? Did you? No. Okay, did the council good. will now hear comments from the public on agenda items. Please approach the podium, clearly state your name and address, and limit your comments to three minutes. Okay. I'll keep my comments to three minutes. Shirley Davis, uh, Verona Methodist Church, Twin Boroughs Health Ministry. I just wanted to thank everybody here. Janet, Pat, you did a great job cooking. Sylvia, Dom, Craig, you did a good job serving. Sandy, Jerry, I don't think we had the engineer there. Um, had to attend his daughter. Ray Sasevich, Dave Recubio, and I even got a I tip from Dave. I was Thank there, you. Too. <laughs> and I was coming back only to hold you to last, Nancy. Oh. Nancy did a good job in the kitchen. She only questioned me one time. <laughs> How'd you make that happen? <laughs> she said, why do we have these uh, napkins under these hot dog bags? I said, because that's why I want them. <laughs> <laughs> but then she said, why don't we move these beans over to here? I said, that's a good idea. Thank you, Nance. But anyways, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for the wonderful job you did. Uh, last council meeting, I couldn't be here, but I did leave a card that was from... It was from um, the kids at the summer camp program, and it says to the borough of Verona, we appreciate and you, we love your kindness, your support, and your generosity. Also to the Verona police, the chief, Sir, Sergeant uh, Jerry, to uh, the Lower Valley um, Ambulance Service, if we would have needed them, thank God we didn't. We didn't need the fire company, but uh, a lot of the kids signed the thing in here, so I just wanted you to have it, and I want to thank you again for everything you do for the Twin Bears Health Ministry. I greatly appreciate thank it. Thank you for all thank the Thank you for everything you, you do. It's our pleasure. Do you thank you. I was actually fun to do. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. It was enjoy. Oh. I, I like the Barb Lusky King. I had three people come to me and say, you know, that dinner made those people human to us. And it really was very touching, you know, what everybody did. And I have to say, I mean, I have to give real good kudos to Craig because he did go out and serve a lot of those tables. <laughs> but I want to thank each and every one of you for coming and for all you did. Thank you for the tip, Dave. He gave me a tip plus his donation. <laughs> and so um, just thank you all. Thanks, Charlie. Thank Thanks, Shirley. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kenna. Uh, the meeting minutes have all been distributed to the council members, uh, so we would need a motion to pass the meeting minutes for the workshop and was there, there wasn't no, a workshop wasn't in August. Just August. So just the August regular business. Okay, so, so I have a motion to pass the meeting minutes for uh, the business meeting of August 2019. I'll make a motion. Motion I'll by Mr. Suchovich, second by Mr. McCarthy. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. <clears throat> Pay the bill. Yep, so everybody received a list in your email of all the checks and payables for the month of August. We need a, a motion to pay the bills. I'll make a motion to pay the bills. Motion by Mr. Conti. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Suchovich. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. All right. Tax collector special taxes report. <clears throat> For the month of August, we received $9,362.30. In the current year real estate taxes, we received $3,946.83 in delinquent real estate taxes, $619.85 in real estate transfer taxes, $35,682.90 in earned income taxes for the current year, $9,220.78 in local service taxes. Okay, can I have a motion to accept the tax collector special taxes report? I'll make that motion. I'll motion second. by Mr. Conti, second by Mr. McCarthy. 
Are there any questions? Yeah, I have one. I'm just wondering when we're comparing August 19 to August 18, I'm struck with the difference between $32,000 for last year and $9,300 for this year. I would have to look at July. Um, we probably... Because yeah, we don't have that sheet where you do all the months this time. I do, but it's... I would have to look at July of 18. Oh. Compare July of 18 over July of 19. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the months shift on when people pay. Um, and I don't have a year to date for J August of 18 either. Um, we're on pace. We've received for the year $571,846 in real estate taxes. Mm -hmm. I think we're on pace to, uh, to hit our budget amount, uh, but I'll verify that and send you an email. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion on the floor by Mr. Conti and second by Mr. McCarthy. Are there any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion passed. And it was brought to my attention by Dr. Carpenter that I forgot to print out the treasurer's report. I emailed it to everybody while we were sitting here, and I have the numbers to report. So we began the month of August with $590,746.43 in the general fund. We received deposits of $132,126.48 and had expenditures of $170,814.53 for an ending balance in the general fund of $552,058.38. I have a motion to accept the treasurer's report. I'll make a motion to accept treasurer's report. Motion by Mr. Conti. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. McCarthy. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have one. On the, uh, Jerry, on this treasurer's report, the sanitary sewer account, mm -hmm. it's huge. Well, we have a quarterly payment that will be coming out next month. Do you it'll know approximately how? About $150,000. So we'll still have 154 left in there. Yes, so. we will. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, motion on the floor. Are there any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Police Chief's report. Good evening. Good evening, Chief. We had uh, received 130 complaints, uh, 25 crimes reported, 21 cleared, uh, 18 charges for arrest made, crimes code summaries were 17, vehicle code summaries 6, borough code summaries were 16, and 113 borough parking tickets were issued. Magistrate's fines collected was $547.21. I'm sorry, $547.21. Parole fines and case collected were six hundred and ten dollars. Case reports sixty dollars. Total of fines and case collected was one thousand two hundred seventeen dollars and twenty one cents. And then another one hundred seventy five dollars in parking permit fee. <coughs> That's all I have for my report. Or uh, Valley's asking us to give the report. You have to read. I can give that to you. Okay. Can we we'll yeah. pass this first? Can I? Um can I have a motion to accept the police chief's report? I make a motion to accept the chief. Motion by Mr. McCarthy. Is second. There a second by Mr. Conti. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> motion passed. Okay, Chief. Uh, Lower Valley has uh, 18 advanced life support calls, three basic life support, seven refusals, and four lift assists, two were counseled, and one false call for a total of 35. Calls them. Okay, can I have a motion to accept the EMS report? I'll make a motion to accept the EMS report. A second. Motion by Mr. McCarthy, second by Dr. Carpenter. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Thanks Chief. Chief. Thank you. Okay, uh, Fire Chief's report. We had. Uh, Ten, 10 fire calls for the month of uh, August. Also, sadly, I regret to tell everybody that one of our life members at the fire department passed away Monday, uh, Don Roth. He's been a member of her since mid-60s. Um, he's been sick. He had strokes and just a whole nine hours. They brought him home for hospice last week. And... We we'll have our fireman service Thursday night, and uh, then there'll be a Friday burial. Just wanted to let everybody know what the status was. How many there. years has it been? He joined in the mid 60s. So 50 years, 50 so That's a long time. 50. 
Now, mind you, he, he, you know, in his latter years, he didn't fight fires, but, you know, he needed someone to let someone in the fire station for someone to work on the equipment or or something like that. But, but she, you know, Dawn was always one that was, was up there, you know. He was always there for the oh, yeah, fish fries, Fish too. fries, the, whatever we needed, Dawn was there. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, I got a lot of stories I could tell you off the record. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> We'll leave it on the record now. He was a good guy. I don't know where he lived. He'll be sadly missed. I'm and, you know, with that, um, I'd like to take a moment of silence, um, not only for Mr. Roth as a fireman, but uh, Bonnie Conway, who passed away uh, recently. Uh, and uh, she's been here 37 plus years. She also was the uh, crossing guard up on First Street. So if we could have a moment of silence for both, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I have, uh, I've, I've called on the engines, I've called, I had some work done on filter, and I have them coming out to do some uh, PM work, oil changes and stuff on the engines. But I have a company coming that we have to do our pump test on them. So when I get, when that gets done, I'll let you know, and, but everything should be good, so. Ray, I was noticed noticed that on Verona Road, the firehouse, the fire station out there, and I'm not sure what number that is. Rosedale, the one Rosedale. Rosedale, yeah. Uh, they've had 800, I think 870 fire calls to date. I mean, yeah. and I know Verona runs with them. So does that mean that you folks? No, we're at about 150 right now. Okay. The way they got a couple different things going. Penn Hill's got a couple different things going than we got. They run a lot more multiple alarm calls out there, There's, and they run they run what they call QRS, and that all goes towards their call count. QR, QRS is like a it's called quick response. They're like a I don't want to say it the way it might sound glorified ambulance people. They're there to, if the ambulance people can't be there right away. They they go in and stabilize the patient, take vitals, do stuff like that. So they do a lot of that stuff, and Verona doesn't. Okay. You know. So them and, and actually Rosedale and Point Breeze do the QRS for Verona along with Lower Valley. Okay. That was set up when Lower Valley took over. So a lot of them calls, a lot of them calls are, the fire calls are like a bogus call. They run, they run a crap ton of calls. All the, there's one Penn Hills company that's, they're probably at 1,200 now. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Can I have a motion to accept the fire chief's report? I make a motion to accept the fire chief's report. Motion by Mr. McCarthy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Loalbo. Are there any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Hey, hey Ray. Yes. In, in addition to the community days at three, isn't it also firemen appreciate, firefighters appreciate? Yes, today? I forgot to mention that. There is a, in, in, we're in an association with Penn Hills and Verona. <clears throat> Um, we've, we've done a lot of good things together and uh, there's a Saturday there's a uh, Fireman Appreciation Day up at the uh, Rose Funeral Home up on, on Frankstown across from I believe it's St. Bart's this is probably the I don't know it's, it's got to be the 8th yeah I was going to say 8th, ninth, 10th year and uh, this the, the funeral director Bernadette she started this and she collects she collects all the food she gets donations for all the food the drinks non-alcoholic drinks naturally um, and she cooks her family cooks and puts out a spread and then uh, there's raffles and there's a firefighters demonstrations we put on and um, I, I forget the exact time for that it's 10 to 11 to 2 11 to 2 and uh, it's all free. The food's free, uh, you know. So if anybody's available, it's it's all free. All the Penn Hills and Verona Fire Companies are there, and they they put the kids. They'll put the kids up in a ladder truck, and you know, up and down. And we have different times. We have demonstrations going on of different things we've done and do, and stuff like that. So it's sort of like a big fireman's touch a truck type of deal, you know. And uh, thank you for reminding me, Craig. It doesn't conflict with the Verona days at all. Yeah. No, it won't affect it, yeah. And what, like I said, I told the mayor, we're, we we have a couple guys that are going to try to be down here for a while for Verona days, it's, you know, so. Thank you. For a while anyway, so. Thank you, Craig. Thanks for reminding me.
Okay, any miscellaneous? The only other thing I have is that I would request that we have an exec session regarding the um, police, uh, hiring police officers and whatnot. Do we need to come back? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Um, I was going to bring that up also. Jerry, thank you. Um, on st uh, to see where the status was on um, hiring officers. And I hope we do make a decision here very soon, you know, with the board. Um, I've been talking with Matt on the feasibility of getting some grant money for a spray park. Um, for, what, for those that don't know what a spray park is, it's really a fun time for kids. Um, and it can go anywhere from... Twenty thousand to two hundred thousand uh, dollars. North Park has one, or not North Park, uh, Deer Lakes. Okay. You and I doesn't talked about doesn't that. Trenum have one. Trenum, they probably do. I'm not sure. Something about like a smaller version. Trenum right, they're different sizes. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've been working with Matt to try to get uh, some grant money. And Sylvia, I'm going to pull you in for some connections too, if possible. Um, I'm working on it, Dave. I didn't forget. And. Um, um, what we're looking at what between fifty and sixty thousand dollars for a decent one I think if we go after CDBG funds that's a pretty reasonable price range. Right. and they're a lot of fun in it. and and like I said this would be grant money yeah it is taxpayers money but it's grant money and if we don't get it somebody else is gonna get it so why not go after whatever we can for grant money and hopefully you know work on it over the winter and if the stars are lined up, maybe we can do something in the springtime or over the summer. Where would we put it? Uh, probably up uh, Cribsfield, uh, where the, maybe the bocce court was, uh, Matt and I was talking about. You know, put a nice little fenced-in area right there. What would be the liability for us insurance-wise? Uh, many places have it. Oakmont has one. They have a small version of one. They have like four loops. To just spray water on you. There's not a push a, button. It's not like there's any pools of water. No, right. There's no drowning out. It's just basically sprinklers. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it just sprays you. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a. No, they have like animals, like a turtle, and it spits you know the no, water no, out. It, it's a lot of fun. Does it involve concrete? No. Okay. Well, did you yes. say concrete? Concrete. Well, it does, but then there's a padding that goes over that. Okay. You know, like the playground padding. That they put over that which is waterproof we might want to confer with the parks and recreation board about where to place well i wanted to bring this yeah. up as a feasibility that's why him and i talked about this to get the numbers you know going and then right. going from there most definitely yeah um oakmont water um did we get in touch with them for the repairs on arb the cement work i sent an email to ryan I didn't hear back from them yet because there's, there's a couple other repairs around town as well. I'll, I'll I mean, we put a lot of money in that, uh, you, you know, works. boulevard. Yeah. And what they did, it's not acceptable. We're at the right in front of the fire hydrant. They replaced the fire hydrant. Uh, right in, in the middle of the boulevard. Yeah, oh, across from, Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's bad. Uh, it, it's real bad. Yeah. yeah, we'll be talking to him about it, um, as well as some other repairs around town. And I've been getting a lot of complaints on speeding coming through town. Um, actually, I kind of diverted the chambers. They were going to get a petition signed. All the, uh, Kevin had called me, Kevin Ewing, the president of the council. Um, especially coming into town, uh, the chief and I had talked and uh, it's 40 miles an hour then right away as soon as you get into Verona it cuts down to 25 and I know I talked with you Matt is that something that PennDOT can do rather than us to do the study on that or change you know where it would uh, just uh, up by the maids start at 25 miles an hour so I had the initial talk with PennDOT uh, they didn't seem too apprehensive about it but they didn't make any decisions yet the first 45 sign is right there where the um, barbecue Queues going in, so my ask to PennDOT was, could we move that back to where the maids are, where the actual businesses start? Right. Um, so I don't know if they would require a, a full depth traffic study for that, or if, if it's something that we could just do. Could but you, we're in talks with them about that. Could in your talks, could you tell them that the business people are going to get a petition, you know, brought to this board? Uh, because of the speeding coming into town. It is horrendous. Is it both ways or is it just it's Pittsburgh? It's both ways, okay. but mainly coming into 
you know, since, from the city. Since the Chanel with the light, man, yeah. just that green light, man. Uh, just go ask Tommy 25. Fall and Jack Shemp, they'll, they'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, I, I believe it's 40, 45 down by the McDonald's Plaza, there, yeah. And then it goes to 25. But it, it doesn't go to 25 until the barbecue place. Correct. You were saying to move the 25 mile an hour sign. You, yeah, the back. slower speed yeah. back further okay. towards the plaza. Right, because I do want to set um, uh, some of our part-time officers, um, once we get that approved for four hours each shift, um, to do nothing but traffic there to slow these people down to show them you know and it's not the run of people it's out of towners that come I flying through it. trucks everything because they see it well, green light. light yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the last thing I have is the um, I think I'm gonna say this right at Karen Hall across the street here on the 22nd they are asking to have the road blocked for their annual picnic You're that we've brother. done every year so I'm going to approve it just to let you, you know, let everybody know if there's no, any questions or anything. Sandy, but don't you also have to do Mr. Jablonski's? Oh, yeah, thank you. It is. It, I do have it on here, too. Um, Ed's his first name, I believe, right? Yeah, Ed Jablonski. Um, he's retired, and uh, we're going to, um, I put him on temporarily until the council meeting, but I'd like to ask council to hire him as uh, the crossing guard for the school year. Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, accept uh, Mr. Jablonski as a crossing guard for this school year. Second. second. Second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? Question. Two questions. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Uh, Zarelli, is, is she not doing it anymore? She's not. She's, yeah, she's not. Um, um, with her health. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know, if, you know. I don't know. She loved doing it. It's yeah. just, uh, you know, she just can't get around like she used to anymore. And, and is, is Billy going to be going back on his yeah, corner? He's going back. He should be back on Monday. Yeah, I, yeah, talked, I talked to him today. I didn't ask him that. But yeah, I talked to him. back on Monday. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, another question. Does, does he have his clearances, his three uh, clearances? The chief was doing all that. I believe he does. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Oh, thank you for thank reminding you. me on that, Jerry. I didn't put it in my book. I know it was on my agenda. Funny, That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a few things here. Um, I know uh, Shirley had expressed her gratitude, but since I spearheaded the community dinner, I also wanted to uh, thank council uh, for the provisions that they put out out of their own pocket. Um, uh, Dom and Pat, the hot dogs and buns. Janet, the mac and cheese. Sylvia, the baked beans and condiments. Ray, the applesauce. Myself, the dessert. David, the tea and, and water. Um, all council served and uh, cleaned up and set up. By, it, it was a phenomenal event. UPMC was there for the community. They provided uh, blood pressure monitoring. There was a doctor on call to answer any questions. They had a game board there with prizes for everybody. There was also a vegetable table, and I think on the vegetable table there was kale and cabbage and tomatoes and carrots for the taking. So um, it was a phenomenal event, a lot of positive positiveness for council. Um, with that in mind, I'd like to make a motion for council to continue this annually. Uh, there are no COG meetings in August, so that fourth Wednesday is doable. I would suggest keeping the picnic dinner uh, because of Labor Day shortly thereafter. And um, again, you know, for council to provide the meal for the community. So I'm making that motion. Is there a second? I will second that. Second by Mr. Conti. Uh, although, are there any questions? What date was that? It was the 28th of August. The Monday. No, it was Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. It was oh, Wednesday. I thought you said you wanted. To, yeah. I'm sure doing annually every year at that. Oh, day. I'm sorry. Every I thought you said every October. Year in It'll be the fourth Wednesday. It's always the fourth Wednesday. Of every so August. Okay. Well, you're making it August, but they have one every month. They yeah. have one every yes. month, but I'm saying for us to do it annually, to continue it annually. 
Okay, are there any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Um, I also have the war memorial on here. Um, I know it's been taken care of. I mean, the weeds were phenomenal, and I was getting a lot of complaints. Uh, it was taken care of at Memorial Day, and then from Memorial Day to Labor Day, not a whole lot was done there. I talked with the rec board last week, and I know that we we focus a lot on cribs, cribs, railroad, Riverside. We heard about Riverside tonight. I did Riverbank. I I uh, did a Google search. The War Memorial falls under the park regime, and so I would like to see more concern for the Veterans Memorial. <coughs> that people pass through town and see this on a daily basis by the hundreds. And I don't see any reason for it to, to look the way it did. Um, I don't know how we can approach this. I don't know. I mean, we have somebody that we're paying. I don't understand if that person's coming regularly, why it ha they have to have reminders to clean this place up. So. I, I have a lot of information about that, and I was I had written an email. I, I understand that. To everyone, and I was suggesting maybe we would have a brief topic under exec for personnel regarding that. Oh, okay. Um, also, in regard to Veterans Day, I've spoken with Mr. Truby. Um, he he provides for the veterans on every year in November. They have a, a ceremony, they have a brunch type of meal, they have speakers, they have prizes that they give out. So I, um, I just spoke with him today uh, I said, and I asked him what can Verona Council do. We have veterans in this community as well. We have a memorial here in town. He said that um, he would appreciate if we could put a basket of some sort together. Um, a, a prize of some sort so I am willing to take that on if you know if anybody's interested on council here of providing uh, something a gift card or whatever um, I will get that together if you could get that to me by the October workshop meeting then that way that gives me a week to either get a wreath made or a, a flower arrangement and I can insert these gift cards inside the, the thing and we can provide that to Mr. Truby for the Veteran Day ceremony uh, at the Riverside Community Church. He, uh, he's also looking for, it's from 8.30 to 10.30 if anybody's interested in in going there, uh, Gary Rogers is going to be the speaker that day. So, um, just putting that out there. Um, the other thing is the battle in the borough it was August 24th. It was Cribs Field. Uh, Lower Valley Athletic Foundation did a phenomenal job here. I, I mean, it was it was a very nice turnout. There was a very nice article in the Trib done by Mike DiVittorio, who was there and was taking pictures and everything. I, I was truly disappointed in the lack of turnout from Verona. Um, Ian Taylor was the main event. Ian's 28 years old. He's a hometown boy. And there was very little show from Verona residents to support their hometown boy. Um, I know Janet and Nancy were there as rec board people uh, patronizing the event. Uh, Dom, I saw you there, but I, I didn't see a whole lot of others of us there. Uh, Jerry, I saw the basket from the, the police, the fire department as well. I was out of town, so I so, um you know, I felt bad for Ian because, I mean, if you, anybody saw this article, it said um, 
the Lower Valley Athletic Association runs the event to try to get more community involvement as well as to show their support for the local f police, the firefighters, the EMS. That's where the proceeds go. It's not going back to the Athletic Association, it's going back into the first responders. Um, it talked about Ian here, uh, that he's a native <coughs> of Verona, that he's a Riverview graduate. I didn't see a whole lot of Riverview people there either, teachers as well. So. Um, it was just disappointing to me. I, I can speak on the fire department. They weren't there because it was their day, their yearly picnic. I oh, I understand, and I, I and you don't have to explain. I just uh, just want to put it out there. Um, September twenty seventh, I have on my calendar that the nine hundred four grant is due. So yeah. Mike and I met, and okay. uh, we have everything all together. So he's going to review it. I'll probably have it to you by this week. Okay. Let's go over. It. And at the um, August. At the August business meeting, Mrs. Provenza, I asked uh, about a policy for the the billboard, the digital billboard, to meet with Steel City Growing, and I was just wondering what the if you can update us on that. Or we, we did meet. Um, Janet was there. Pat was there, and um, he explained that there are certain people that use the board, like for borough business. There isn't a charge. Anything outside of that, then there is a charge. But I mean, are we going to have a working policy as you saw this evening? Laura Jacka asked about using the billboard. So I mean, well, I thought we, we got a list of bullet points that they gave us with the look at, didn't they? Uh, did, did didn't not. somebody give us something? I didn't receive anything. Mm -hmm. My understanding was that they they have their policy as to where they draw the line, who pays the money, and who doesn't. And Jim was that, supposed to get that. I thought I saw something. He, he, Jim said he would write it up. He would write something up and, and get it to so us. So I don't know who right. he gave it to. But, but within the, the, the category of who doesn't pay the money, that was sort of where it was a little foggy. I but think, the, yeah. the, the committee was to take care of this. Mm -hmm. And I know at the code meeting, you were discussing this with, with Mr. Alexander. And <coughs> that's where I got it. That's where I, that's I don't where, know. That's where I, like, where, where are we as yeah, they, a council? I gave you those bullet points. With our 45 not me. minutes. Yeah, I'm I gave not sure. it to you. Not me. You no, I gave them to Craig because okay. if he has to do an ordinance, he's the one that would. So. Yeah. So they're in my car somewhere. <laughs> His other office. <laughs> Mobile office. <laughs> so that's a still a work in progress, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. All right, that would be everything. Um, Mr. Pitch. Yes, thank you. Uh, the signal on Wildwood uh, it ended its 30 day uh, test period. The contractor will be providing us a maintenance bond for that. Uh, that will be good for two years for any work that needs to be done on that. Um, hopefully nothing, but we are covered in case there needs to be. We received back the contracts for the first street reconstruction, so we're good to go on that. I will get the bid documents created, and we should anticipate work in spring of 2020. Uh, the CDBG uh, projects, the sanitary lining and the road reconstruction, those were both awarded. We're just awaiting on schedules from the contractors on those. The 2019 paving, we did award it already. Holbein will be holding the contract due to the work that needs to be done on the storm sewer up there on the 2nd. The Greenways trails that was submitted, we're just waiting to hear back. Uh, probably won't hear back until around November on that at the earliest. <coughs> This year's CDBG, they returned into the cause this year or this week. Um, we put in for three applications, one being a comprehensive CCTV and condition rating of the borough storm source. Uh, that was in uh, reaction to the second street uh, damage that occurred. We're trying to get ahead of that and prevent it from happening again anywhere else around town. Um, we just put one in. Uh, it's a it's a long shot, but basically the same 
grant we applied to the DCD for a new pavilion. We put that in again for Cribs Field. Um, doesn't cost us anything to put it in. And like I said, it's a long shot, but we could possibly get that. Uh, and the third one was for sanitary lining along First Street. Um, we have the DCD or the multimodal grant that we're going to be doing the street reconstruction up there. So I thought it would be a good idea to, to try to get the sanitary lined along there to prevent any future issues there. Uh, the storm repairs are moving along. This, uh, the second, the Selden Avenue pipe replacement was awarded the Holbein. Uh, um, I was in contact with them today, um, waiting on a schedule for start of work on that. Uh, and we did gain the last bit of information we needed. Um, there was laterals coming what we believed was Wood Street and Church Street into the storm line on second. So we had to get a specialized camera to track those laterals and find out exactly where they were coming from uh, before that line was abandoned. And we needed to know if we had to tie back in or not. So we have all that information. Uh, the drawings are gonna be done this week and I should be getting quotes from contractors starting next week. Uh, the other thing that I didn't get on here tonight uh, we were awarded the Duquesne Light LED Coverhead program. Uh, the borough will be receiving 120 new lights. Uh, that is going to be cover the streets of uh, First, Second, and Third, North Avenue, Center Avenue, South Avenue, Vogels Lane, Wildwood Avenue, East and West Railroad, Penn Street, and Arch Street. So all the overhead lighting on those streets will be replaced with LED lights. Light it up. And, and That's pretty much the, the whole time. Huh? Yeah, we hit every time. Yeah, good. The oh. basic wattage was, if I remember correctly, was a, a 65. But talking to the, the chief and Jerry, we felt that our streets were a little too dark to begin with, so we bumped it up one wattage. Beautiful. Really? Light so it up. they're not going to be floodlights, but it's going to be brighter than what it is now. Uh, Matt, yeah. I have a question on the lights. Yes, the, uh, we had a lot of them removed, especially on the boulevard, because we have those decorative lights. Are any lights, any new lights coming on there? ARB. On no, nothing on ARB. Uh, We're also doing it on East Railroad, mm -hmm. and we have some of those lights that are off now. The only ones that, that will be, be replaced are the ones that currently have cobra heads. Okay. That are on. No, no new lights are going up. All right. But um, the reason I'm asking off. because I thought we were going to eliminate all these lights on mm -hmm. East Railroad because we had the decorative lights. I don't know if that's what we still want to do. Or if I mean, if we want to, that, that we didn't pay the invoice yet, so we could remove those lights. Uh, okay. East Railroad isn't completely covered by decorative lights. The park no, down that and there are no at decorative lights. James, there's no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just up to so just seven hundred blocks. So we, we could take yeah, out seven hundred entire stretch of East Road. We can take out those two blocks. Yes, that'd be good. Is there anywhere we can put them? I can ask Duquesne that. Just instead of decreasing the amount, we just move them to other streets. I mean, we've hit almost every. We've hit almost every main road. Maybe Athletic or maybe South. What about Alleys? Maybe Alleys. Ridge. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. Ridge. Yeah. A lot of our lights go off. Yeah. What about Ridge? Yeah, oh, we'll take a look at that. Yeah, we'll take a look. One of the one of the reasons we were kind of held to these streets that were picked, uh, Duquesne Light required it to be ten continuous lights because I did look at Ridge. Unfortunately, they only have six lights. Yeah. So. Um, Most of them are off half the time. But I will ask him, being that he's in, because after I talk to him, they just want to make sure that they don't come into a town and do six lights only. So being that they're almost doing every street, I'll see if I can move these uh, East Railroad to possibly Ridge. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for looking into that. <laughs> and that's all I have, unless there's questions. Matt, on Center Avenue, up near, almost near Second. Past, past athletic. They're starting to get a little, I don't know if you've seen that going up there. Sink, yeah. Sink Sinkhole Sink. looking like. Uh, Where the water is leaking there? Above that. Above Between that, Between okay. there and, and, and Second Street, like in the middle of the road. If you drive up there, you'll see it. It's kind of, it's kind of almost in line with the uh, sanitary. I think the sanitary is <coughs> down the middle of the street. I think it does. It's pretty much in line with that. 
Okay. I just noticed that myself. I will, I'll look into that. Thanks. Um, I have a question about repairing the big hole. Yes. Um, I know that you you commented that you were going to be getting um, some contractor bids next week, starting next week. Yes. So just from your experience with how the process goes, what are we looking at in terms of them actually starting that work? When, approximately? I'm going to talk to them on that. Uh, we, with the, the quoting and bidding process, obviously you want to look for the cheapest number, but if the cheapest number is not able to, to do it until spring, mm -hmm. that's obviously going to be a, a consideration we have to take right into. There, yeah. So that's part of the bidding process is I'm going to ask them for what their time frame is to, to be able to do it. So that hole might exist through winter? No. Okay. I, I, well. I would hope not, uh, depending on what the bids come in, though. If, if one contractor is $50,000 cheaper than all the other contractors but says he can't get to it till spring, mm -hmm. that that's a tough decision we would have to make at that point. I, I hope it doesn't come to that, but uh, I'm not saying that it's not impossible. I, I would personally hope to see it being repaired by November. Okay. Um, but like I said, that's a, that would be a tough decision we'd have to face if numbers and time frames come in that way. And your guesstimate as to how much? Uh, I put, was putting some numbers to it. I think we're going to be in about the 180 to 200 range. Um, but it, I haven't got any numbers from contractors yet. And that just for a second? Correct. And how approximately how much is Selden? Selden, I had, yeah, we awarded that. It was uh, 66, I believe. Plus there was an, al there was a. That was with the alternate. That was with the alternate? Correct. Is, is that um, on your report? I don't believe I had the number on that. Not this report, it was on last month's report, I believe. Oh, it was rewarded, la awarded mm -hmm. by last month? I don't remember that. I thought we were gonna get it in the, the I had the quote for the, uh, Selden at last month's meeting. Okay, sorry, I don't remember. Do we have, okay. I'll find the exact number for you. Okay. Well, if you send an email, I can look back and look at the email. I just didn't remember getting it. Well, that's okay, don't worry about it. Thank you. And, yep, thank you. Thank Are you done? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mr. Alexander. Thank you. Just a, a few items uh, this month, Madam President. Uh, I received an updated list of regulated rental violators uh, from Marsha, and I've prepared new civil complaints against uh, those uh, people that are on that list now. And uh, those will be filed with Judge DeLuca and hopefully get uh, dates in short order. Um, Approximately two months ago, I, I wasn't at the meeting. Dane Dice was, was sitting here in my stead. Uh, there was a uh, resident that appeared and had a complaint with regard to a tree that, that she removed uh, from her property uh, in order to have a plumber do a sewer line uh, inspection. And, sh and she wanted com compensated uh, for the cost of that tree removal that occurred seven years ago. And uh, uh, that was referred to me. Dane had indicated her, to her that we'd give her a response within 60 days. That that 60-day time period is, is, is looming, so I did issue her a letter saying that uh, the, the borough has no responsibility uh, for the, for her removal of the, tr of the tree. One on the merits, and, and, and even if even if we did, uh, the the seven-year lapse of time would would bar her recovery due to uh, a statute of limitation issue. But um, but it's my opinion that that's, it's not a borough issue. It's it's a it's a private issue between her and her plumber, uh, and and that's the end of it as far as I'm concerned. Okay, thank you. Uh, the only other thing I have to report on is just as we do on a monthly basis, we meet on the fourth Monday of the uh, month generally. And sometimes it shifts here and there, uh, but uh, we continue to do that with our code and ordinance committee with uh, Dr. Carpenter and, and uh, Sylvia and, and uh, our president. Uh, who else is on that committee? And Mark and, and Jerry. Jerry's there, Mark's yeah. there, yeah. Keith. 
Keith. Don't forget Keith. So that's it. I know Nancy will follow up on some of that stuff. Thank you. Mr. Conti. Uh, the road, 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 road department's been six, repairing six, different six, six, things six, six, here and there throughout the borough. Uh, catch basins, storm, storm lines, uh, a couple broken poles they've had to replace. A uh, little bit of asphalt here and there, but everything seems to be going good. And I will get together with them, with what uh, that lady asked about the spraying on the hillside over there. I'll see if they know anything about that. Don, do you have any idea when the um, when when the they will switch over to the leaf collecting? Uh, I don't. I don't Rugged know general, the exact date. No, approximately. Uh, September. It's probably going to be. End of October. End of October, beginning of November, usually. Mm -hmm. And if we get a colder fall, it might be a little bit earlier than that, but that's generally when it is. Okay. And if you want to mind handing that to Jerry, this is. Don, are you going to call AJ tomorrow? Yeah. About that. When you call him, can you let him know that those planters shipped and that we need to make sure that when they come off that truck, they're inspected before they hit our garage? And How many are there? Three. Yes. And if they're, um, if they're any damage on them, do not accept them. If we end up, if they we take possession and there's damage, it's on us. Okay. There's a lot of money. And, what, and what's that? The new account? planters that, that we had to order from the damaged planters that were. Okay. When did you say they were coming? They should be here in a day or two. Okay. Uh, I have a question too, Dom. Um, it has, has something changed about the street sweeping? Are they only doing it every other week now? Because that's been I, know, my I, see I see them every Tuesday when I come down for work. Yeah, well, I, I see them every week on Thursday. I'm out there every every Tuesday, and I've been seeing them every other Tuesday. They come at exactly as as the same time every week. So I just wanted to check with you because I was yeah. perplexed as to why. Usually every every Tuesday, and today was the same way. When I come down Center Avenue to go to work, they're coming towards Center Avenue to go up the hill. I see them every single Tuesday out on the on the machine. They went they went down today on third. Yeah. Yeah, they were there in my neighborhood today, but not last week. And not three weeks ago. So I okay. just was wondering if there was did, did I know of no, I can ask them if there's something going on, but Okay. Thanks. Hey, I have one other thing just real quick. Not part of my report, but something I got a kick out of when when uh uh, Sandy mentioned Mike DiVittorio and, and, and going to the wrestling event. I think that he thought that that was the best assignment he could ever have because you could tell he was there not not only as a reporter as as part of his job but he was there as a fan. He had his his chair there. He had people with him, and, and he was cheering the whole time uh, that, that I was there. I wasn't able to stay a whole long time, but you could tell that he was really enjoying himself at that at that event. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was. <laughs> oh yeah. Nancy. Um, okay. Uh, we had our meeting on August 26th, our ordinance meeting. And basically right now we're still working on doing some research uh, regarding the food truck ordinance that we're going to most likely revise. And um, doing some research about whether or not we need an Airbnb ordinance of any type. I think there are some zoning issues that Mark mentioned about Airbnbs. Um, so we're, we're researching all of that uh, right now. Um, those are the highlights of the ordinance meeting, unless, uh, Craig, you can think of anything else. Those uh, are I, the two that we were focusing on. Yeah, yeah. And there's some enforcement things that Mark is taking care of and, and Keith, and they're, they're doing a good job. So. Um, I uh, do want to have a short exact girl tag along with yours, Jerry, um, uh, regarding personnel. I also wanted to point out to everybody, I gave you two, two quotes on uh, sprinkler systems. They should be there in your piles of paper somewhere. Um, we haven't been able to get a third one, but this uh, Emco Sprinkler Company out of Murraysville had a very nice quote of $29.90, which is basically $3,000, which is about $1,100 less than the other quote. We can get a third one. I mean, it's not something we're going to do now. 
But the other thing that seems to be coming uh, into question about doing the sprinkler system is uh, the electricity. And so there may need to be some, uh, an electrician involved. So would that be an extra cost? Probably, yeah. So, you know, it's a work in progress as well. At this point, we're not in any hurry. It's September. Uh, I don't think anyone's recommending putting a, in a brand new sprinkler system and then have it go through the winter. Oh, I did want to mention, though, too, the water line that goes out to, to the hose here by the gazebo, it broke last winter. It's still broken. Do we want to get guys that would be doing sprinklers if they're capable to fix that? Or does that something AJ can fix? That's something AJ fixes. If, if it's broken, it broke again. Because when it broke in the winter and you guys went over, we, we turned it on and it was broken. Yeah. He fixed that. So if it's broken again, it Oh, I, I don't again. think anyone's turned it on all summer. It's never been fixed. Well, the brake that we had when we turned it on the first time, yeah. he fixed that. No, it's the same brake. Well, that's what I'm saying. If if it's, if it's broken again, then or if it's if it's broken now, it's broken again because I know he went over and did something with it to to fix it. Okay. Flush. Well, maybe when you have, I'll ask him about it. Ask him about it. Yeah, because it, there's a big hole you can stick your finger in it. It looks the same to me as it did in April or May or whatever it was. Um, okay, so I think that's all I have for right now. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. McCarthy. Uh, the exact session with Jerry. That's on the police. Okay, thank you. Mr. Suchovich. It's getting to be budget time. Um, Jerry and I have talked, and uh, we're going to, we or he or I are going to talk to the department heads and start getting the budget together. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Lowalba. A few things on the rec board. Um, one thing is the pickleball court. Um, everybody, I think, has a letter there. It says, Dear Council, on behalf of all the people in Verona who play pickleball, I'd like to thank the Borough Council and the Verona Public Works Department for the wonderful work done to install four new pickleball courts in Riverbank Park. The courts look terrific, and they're already getting regularly uh, use. To follow up, two follow-up items, they're planning to hold a grand opening, which will be held on Saturday, September 21st from 9 to 1. There'll be free pickleball lessons and demonstrations. No food or other complications. Everyone from council is cordially invited to attend. Um, they'd also like to put up a welcome sign on a, the chain link fence there near the entrance, as well as four small court number signs, like court one, court two, court three, and court four. Um, would you please approve these as soon as possible? Hopefully not waiting for the next council meeting so we can get them ordered. I know we did talk about this at our uh, rec board meeting. Um, I'd like to recommend that we have the signs made that we can. Uh, so I'd like, 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 like to make a motion. motion to have the signs made, uh, the one 18 by 12, which will be the welcome to the pickleball court, and the other uh, four signs for court one, two, three, and four. Uh, I'll second that motion. Okay, yeah. motion on the floor, and, and they, they are picking up the cost of that, yes, correct? Yes, they are. Okay. Yes, no cost to us. Okay, a uh, motion on the floor made by Mrs. Lowalba and seconded by Dr. Carpenter for the signage for the pickleball court. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No, I think I do think though AJ may need to put them up. The, our guys, I wasn't sure how that worked. Okay. You know? Yeah, if, if if we get them made, they'll put them up. Could you tell me the date that the grand opening is? Again? It's it's the Saturday, September twenty first. Yeah, what time? Sure. Nine, nine to one. Nine to one. Nine do we need to one. order them? Do we need to do anything? They're are they handling everything? They're handling everything. We just have to have AJ put them up. Great. Right. This guy's wonderful. He he takes care Perfect. of everything. Yeah, there's also, if you'd like to play pickleball, they do have an email um, that you can go on, is it Facebook, Nancy, or something like that? No, it's a, it's a special scheduling thing. Um, here, it's right here on, on the second page of the letter that he gave us. Okay. Tinyurl.com, Verona yes, Pickleball. That's how you can sign up. The court time's there. 
Craig, do we need to put um, that into some type of ordinance or anything, like the time being that it's a public park? I mean, if I go down there and if there's nobody playing and I go play, then all of a sudden somebody comes down and says, why well, reserve this from 10 to 11? I don't think that you need to put that in the for, in, in an order or, or something. Do we need to do anything? You can develop a policy if you want to. I mean, I, but do you see what I'm trying to sure, say? But I, I think that you, have, you know your, your, your baseball fields. People have those reserved. You can't just walk. Them. But we have um, they have permits for the right. times. I mean, we can look at it, but I, I think I, I don't know that you need to put it in an ordinance. We can develop some sort of a policy as it, as we go. I don't see just a, something I brought up. Somebody probably want to bring him but. in, bring Mr. Pepper in uh, uh, to include him in the conference because they have a lot of policies that they do with that. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, go forth. I spoke with Matt um, about the parks inspection. We're going to get in contact with Mr. Ford, who does a lot of the play equipment to get the parks inspected for this. You know, the play equipment, make sure everything's safe. Um, also talking with Jerry about the budget on the rec board. Um, that money is money needs to be used. It's not a carried over to the next year. So what we had budgeted for this year, we need to use up or use it or we're going to or lose it. Um, let's see. It was recommended too that they would like to possibly buy two more sets of the lights that are like hanging at the pavilion for the little gazebo here to light along. So um, that's possible. I'd like We got those at Sam's, I think. Would we still be able to get that this time of year? Is that something we have to wait till it starts to get holiday time? We can look um, online too. They may be able to order online, okay. but they may carry them, Sam. I'm not sure if they have them right now, but okay. you know, place to. So I'd like to make a motion to order two sets of lights for the gazebo. I'll second that. Okay, motion on the floor by Mrs. Loalbo and second by Dr. Carpenter to purchase two more sets of lights for the gazebo. Um, are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. I know fall decorating is coming up too. Um, it was questioned about who purchased the decorations last year. I think, or actually, I think AJ did. I think he did. I'm so that's my recollection. I'm pretty came. sure he did. So, you know, we were looking maybe at the corn stalks and the hay bales and feed the deer with the pumpkin again and <laughs> things like that. So, okay. if that's possible. I'd like to go ahead and do that as well. Okay. I'm making a motion. I'll make a motion for our borough guys to purchase the decorations for the pavilion for the fall decorations. I'll second that. Okay. okay. Motion on the floor by Mrs. Lalba, second by Mrs. Provenza. <coughs> Are there any questions? When, when do you want those up? I would say October. Mm -hmm. Beginning? Beginning, beginning yeah. of October. October. Yeah. Beginning okay. of October. <laughs> Also, if the lights could be changed to orange, they're mm -hmm. asking. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Sorry. Uh -huh. aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. <coughs> if the lights at the pavilion could be changed to orange. Yep. <laughs> okay. Also, let's see. I have a letter from the K from the Lower Valley Athletic Football, dear Verona Council and Verona Parks and Recreation Board. This letter is to confirm that as of 8-24-2019, there's $2,065.70 reserved and available for the use toward Verona Parks and Recreation. This amount will remain available until the Parks and Recreation Board and or Verona Borough Council decides the most beneficial use of these funds. These funds are only to be used for park Verona Park upgrades, Verona Park activities, or and or Verona Park fundraisers. This amount can be spent all or at, all at once or at any set amount needed until the balance of this amount reaches zero. This amount or any remaining balance from this original amount will also be available any time deemed necessary by Verona Council. Sincerely, Verona Lower Valley Athletic Foundation. A lot of this money comes from their concession sales, from their football, um, from the uh, the KSW uh, battle in the borough too. Um, so there was quite a few. Was it sixteen sixteen hundred seventy five dollars that was raised um, toward donation from the uh, wrestling tournament. 
and the next battle of the borough three will be August 22nd of 2020. So thank you, Lower Valley, to your donation. What, 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 what was the, the amount that they, the balance? Right here. The total amount? Oh, yeah. $2,065.70. Would the decorations and the extra lights come out of that money? That's a, I mean, we have money in the parks and rec budget. Okay. And that's all I have. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, this is Provenza. Good evening. My report is um, newsletter meetings and events. Uh, starting with newsletter, I need the articles, either um, articles or uh, ads by this Friday, September 13th. I would like to go to print, if at all possible, next week. So if you have any articles, any ads, please get them to us. Also, um, Community Days was mentioned. Uh, I'm just reminding, I have it on my notes here. Please invite your family, your friends. It's going to be a very, very nice day. A lot of work's gone into this, and um, it's something we need to support. So uh, from 3 to 7 this Saturday, right here at the river, at the railroad park, uh, please try to attend. We'd appreciate it. On Tuesday, September 17th, is Chamber of Commerce meeting here in the building, 7 o'clock. Uh, Thursday, the September 19th, Historical Society will be starting up again. And uh, Jack Sheehan from the uh, Heinz History Center will be here. And he will be speaking on uncovering Pittsburgh stories. And they always send wonderful people. Rhoda does a really good job with bringing great, great speakers. So um, please share this with family and friends, and we'd love to see you there. Also, on uh, Thursday, September 19th, same day, uh, our Chamber of Commerce is going to hold the uh, Chamber of Commerce Inner Mixer. And what that is is um, it's going to be here at the uh, Inner Groove from 5 to 7. And an invitation's been sent out to Penn Hills, Plum Borough, um, Oakmont, and the Ali Kiski Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we're all gonna get together there, meet one another, share some ideas, and it's open to our council, our local businesses, and anyone that would like to attend. So I think that's a very nice thing to try to bring people together. So it'd be great to see as many of you there as possible. What time is that? It's from five to seven. Oh, sure. And then you can come right across the street to the Historical Society yeah. meeting right after, because that'll be at 7. And um, lastly, on uh, Monday, September 23rd, we will have block watch training here, right here at our fire hall. And Ray, thank you for making that possible, letting us use it. Appreciate it. And that'll be yeah. from 7 till 9. And uh, the training is going to be done by the Allegheny County Sheriff's Department. So we're all about safety in this town, and this is a wonderful opportunity to come and to learn about, <coughs> pardon me, learn about how to do a block watch in your street, your area. So please try to attend it and share this with other people here in the community, your family, your friends. It's important. And that is it. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Um, special committees. There was no con uh, cog meeting in August. Uh, anything on Alem, Mrs. Provenza? Uh, no, not any news at all. Anything on TCC, Mr. Sutcher? Nothing. Okay. Council will now hear comments from the public on public related items. Please approach the podium, clearly state your name and address, and limit your comments to three minutes. <coughs> Hi, Luke Maddox, 234 Penn Street. It is uh, time for our fall cleanup that is going to be on Saturday, October 19th. It's from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. I'd like to ask council for authorization to uh, have some money to spend to buy food for the pit students. I wanted to ask for that first because we haven't signed up for the pit students yet. Uh, the sign up just opened up. So um, if we can have the funding, we do have the volunteers to make this happen. How much are you asking? I think 200 would be enough to cover food and drinks and some veggie trays and things like that. Um, 
I need to check the paint situation from last year. I don't know if any of that paint's been used for any other borough projects. I think that it was for that uh, the give back day for Riverview, so that we kept with the cans sure. okay. so that we can make sure we get more yeah. paint. So we'll have to do get you, some more paint. Do you usually get the paint, or does AJ usually get? We've paint? got the paint. You we go to Home Depot and we buy it under the borough's tax okay. thing. So we. I just want to make sure. If and then we yeah. Then we just got reimbursed, and that worked out fine. So, okay. okay, so uh, that's fine. So if if we need paint, it could be higher than two hundred. You know, it could be 300, but we'll have to see. So if I have it, like a pre-authorization, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, give Luke the $200 for the pit students. I'll second, second that. Uh, plus I'm any sorry. any money he needs for paint. For paint. Okay, okay for motion on the period. floor by Mr. Conti, second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Okay, and we we do. I mean, we have I think enough volunteers, but we always can appreciate help. So you know, it basically is just leading the kids around to do the litter cleanup, or work with them painting. So that's it. Uh, can the we, second, can some, we sorry. request uh, a, a particular look at the area, the step area between First and Vogels Lane? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and the the steps are not going to be reopened between South and whatever i'm sorry the the street. Street. yeah the, the cost right as of right now they're not going to be we have to we have to decide what we're okay. going to do well then we don't have to worry about litter there then so that's good uh, no there's litter there but it, it's more dangerous for you to pick the litter up than it is to just leave it there okay. to be honest with you that having the kids on that hillside it's not safe okay thank you and the second thing i'm here on behalf of uh BDAC, uh i know we're talking about budgets so um, we had had wayfinding as a potential thing for next year. So I wanted to ask if that could be put in the budget. Um, I think when Matt had looked into that last year, we had a number of around 25 to 30,000. And that was an initial study and design and uh, you know, basically the, the planning of the whole process. So, so if that could be put in, that doesn't mean the money would be spent and council could say whether you want to do it or not, but if there's room to get it in the budget, we'd appreciate it. You know, appreciate to get that in there. So, all right, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I have a motion for adjournment to exec session? I'll and we do not have to return. Second. I'll make a motion second. for adjournment to exec session. Motion by Mr. Second. Conti, second by Mr. Suchovich. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Are we staying in here? Yeah.